guys, we are on to topic two. Thank you for watching the topic one videos. I appreciate the, the transition to doing something different here. Topic two focus on adding and subtracting decimals. Now you already know how to add and subtract whole numbers mentally. Today we're going to learn about how to do um, add and subtract decimals mentally. So we're going to look at a problem like this and we're going to use two tools, two properties of addition and multiplication to solve these types of problems. So we have $20.75. Let's say you just bought a new computer and you want to buy some games. The one game costs $20.75. The next game costs $18.25 and the final game is $10.59. And you want to figure out how much that is total, but you don't have a calculator or a pencil and paper handy, so you need to do it all in your head. Now to do this, we can use something called a commutative property, which states that you can add numbers in any order, such as 5 plus 2 is 7, and, seven, and 2 plus 5 is 7, and you'll get the same answer. And we can also use the associative property. The associative property says that states that you can group any numbers together. So if you're doing 5 plus 2 plus 1, you can do 5 plus 2 first to get 7 plus 1 is 8, or you could do 2 plus 1 first to get 3 plus 5 is 8. You're going to get the same answer. So let's break this problem down. Okay, what we want to look for in this problem is numbers that work together nicely. So the 75 and 25 jump out immediately because they both end in 5. And we know that 75 plus 25 is going to give 100. And 100 cents is $1. So when we look at a problem like this, we have now we have $1 here. We have to do 20 plus 18. Well, 20 plus 18 we can do in our head, which is 38. So 38 plus $1 is 39. Now we're left with $10.59. Well, because we're at $39 even, adding $10 to it's no problem, we get $49. And since we have no cents right now, you just add that on there. So we have $49.59. So we did that in our heads by breaking it down using the associative property. Okay, numbers that work really nicely together are what we call compatible numbers. Compatible numbers are easy to compute in your head. So, we're going to look at three numbers here, $11.45, $3.39, and $9.55. Which out of those three numbers would be, uh, which two out of those three numbers would be compatible with each other? When looking for compatibility, you want to look behind the decimal point, okay? So when you see these three numbers, 45, 39, and 55, the two that jump out immediately are the 55 and the 45. Why? Because when we add these numbers together, we get 100, and 100 cents is a dollar. So what we're going to do is we're going to cross these off. Remember, we're doing this all in our head. Right now I'm writing it down so you can see our process. Cross those off and we get a dollar, so we're adding a dollar to it. Then we can do mental math here. 11 plus 3, or sorry, 11 plus 9 is 20. 20 plus 1 is 21. 21 plus 3 is 24 and last we add in the cents so our answer here is $24.39 and that is how we do mental math. The last tool we're going to use is something called compensation. All right. So compensation is when you take or add something to another number to make it easier and then in the end you adjust that. So let me show you what I mean. All right, so we have 4 and 25 hundredths and 3 and 8 hundredths. That can sometimes be difficult to do in your head. So what we do in our head is we make that 3 8 hundredths to 3 and 10 hundredths. Why? Because 10 is easy to take away from 25. So when we do this in our head then, we know that 25 minus 10 is going to give us 15 and 4 minus 3 is going to give us 1. So we have 1 and 15 hundredths now. Now the compensation, we compensate it by adding 2 to this. So we need to add 2 to this number. 2 hundredths, by the way. Make sure you're not adding 2 tenths or 2 to the whole number. So when we do that, when we compensate for it, we're going to get 
1 and 17 hundredths. So this is all what we can do in our head when we're just doing subtraction and addition. You can use things like compatible numbers, associative property, commutative property, and compensation to help you figure one out. Uh, I'd like you to try a couple problems. So at the end of this video, there will be two or three questions for you to answer. And please use these tools that we've learned today.